Hello, my name is Dave Marr, and I've been successfully helping students for the last 15 years pass their global simulation game. My videos are designed to cut the fluff and tell you the real deal on how to win the game and, and be successful. Today's topic is the optional assignment called the three-year strategic plan. The strategic plan is a four-part assignment, uh, which we can see here uh, includes stating a vision statement for a company, establishing objectives for EPS, ROE, credit rating, and inventing a stock price for the next three years, declaring what the competitive strategy will be, and also uh, preparing a, a pro forma income statement for the next three years based on unit sales, revenues, costs, profits, etc. cetera. Uh, how fun can this all be? <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the game. Uh, so far, uh, the company is doing very good. Uh, we've been winning every single round uh, to date. This is year nine, although strap plans can happen in years uh, often often nine, but it could be as late as 11, 12, 13 even uh, for, other, for other strap plans. Theoretically, doing a strap plan in year 10 is also possible. So it, it pops up everywhere, but the approach is the same. The um, strategic vision statement uh, is a custom statement which your team will have to create. Uh, I, I do suggest writing your own vision statement uh, so that it's so it's your own company's interpretation of the strategy. The, the performance targets are five criteria scoring measures, which your company will, will be graded upon for the next three years. Your company will be graded upon how well your company is able to beat uh, investor expectations or at least meet them. Uh, there is scoring criteria, which you can see here, EPS, ROE, and stock price get full points, 20 points, if the company beats all three measures at 30% or more. In the case of credit rating, it's an A plus for 20 points. And for image rating, it's 30 points higher than, than investor expectations. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, permutations of this, 19 points, and that, that's 20%, 18 points for 10%. There's of course uh, just just uh, forecasting investor expectations, which will only get you 16 points, and then go into 14 points, which is more of the consolation underachievement point segment. And if your company is just able to just do decently, you should be able to get at least 10 points as long as your company is halfway trying to get there. Let's have a look at EPS. Now our company is very successful. Uh, let's have a look at our net profit for the year at hand. As we can see, it's a solid $135,000, $135 million in the game itself, which is quite high. Relative to our competition, that's, that's double actually, everyone else. Our company uh, has futuristic growth, definitely in the positive. We can forecast aggressively. So having a look at our EPS, 7.25, 30% higher is 9.43. I like using a piece of paper. I'm old fashioned. Uh, you guys could use Excel or something if you want to. Uh, an extra 30% makes it 12.25, an extra 30% makes it 15.93. Now I'm very, I'm very optimistic and very confident our company is able to get the, these, uh, these projections. However, is that if the company does not meet these uh, forecasts, you'll be, you'll be docked points instead. And that's even worse. You'll get a lot lower than 10, it could be zero. Uh, in the case of ROE, we're at 61.5%, which is already a very high amount. Now, our company are already sitting at 104.3%. That's also a very high amount. And the main factor, okay, is that our company has ability to see increasing ROE as long as our company buys back shares. And in addition, uh, has skyrocketing net profit. So our company is able to comfortably uh, increase our EPS by 30% as well, every single year. 61.5 equals 79.95 times by 1.3. 
69.95 times by 1.3, 103.94. I will write all these numbers down shortly. I know this is kind of boring. One thirty-five twelve. Stock price two is also very high at two thirty-eight point four seven. So two thirty-eight point four seven times by one point three. Three ten point zero one times by one point three. 403.01 times by 1.3, 523.92. Let's have a look over at the credit rating. The company's credit rating is at an A uh, at this time. Uh, in the game right now, it's forecasting an A minus. Now, it, it becomes debatable whether or not the company can uh, maintain an A minus credit rating, but so far we've been able to do so, and that is the industrial expectation. So we'll just uh, forecast A minus credit ratings for the rest of the game. Uh, well, yeah, and then in the future, okay, if it's lower than that, you'll be docked a few points potentially. So hopefully it doesn't happen, but it's a forecast, so we'll have to see what's possible here. In the case of image rating, uh, in the distant past, well, five years ago, maybe, uh, image rating points via the scrap plan was calculated based on 70 points times by 10, 20, 30%. Um, however, they pegged the value to investor expectations. Therefore, this changes. That's very key. Um, to me, it makes it almost unrealistic for most companies, especially if they didn't invest into certain things that help increase image rating. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Uh, but uh, that's where it is right now. We will forecast company C has 90 image points. So 75 times by 1.2 is 90. Now, inside the game itself, it's 94, um, which shows us that the company's image rating is, is actually actively increasing, but it's not quite there to make that 20% mark. Now, it's stylistic to decide, should we forecast a little bit higher or a little bit lower? Is that, uh, it is, it's only a forecast, it could be higher or lower. For the purposes of this, is that we will forecast on the lower side, four year, nine. But we'll actually forecast on the higher side for the following year, as likely uh, by the time of year 10, our company's image rating should be higher at 98. Lastly, let's have a look at year 11 for image rating. 77, which is two points higher. That makes 30% higher at 100. So let's, let's plug these numbers in. Uh, 9.95. 12.25. 15.93. 79.95. 103.94, with an A minus credit rating in every region, or sorry, every year for the next three years, and 90 image points in year nine, 98 in year 10, and 100 in year 11. This concludes that the company is going to have, a, uh, we are promising investors that will surpass expectations by 30% year 9, 10, 11 for EPS, ROE, stock price. Our company will have at least A minus credit rating for three of the years, for, three, for the next three years. And our image rating will eventually reach up to 100, which this is already the max points, which is 30% higher than the investor expectation in year 10 and the investor expectation for year, for year 11. And this only being 20% higher. If our company is able to achieve all of this, our company should be able to achieve almost 98 points, only losing a point here for image rating, giving a little bit lower, 
and two points here for credit rating for the year at hand. And actually, actually, these two years should get almost 98%, only losing a point for credit rating for just being a little bit under. The third step to the strap plan is the AC camera strategic approach and the UAV drone strategic approach is that uh, there are several different types of strategies to choose from global low cost leadership strategy global differentiation best cost focus strategy or combination of strategies or no consistent strategy for both cameras and drones now this very much goes into interp into an interpretation of how you view the company i view my company as all as a best cost strategy because i still want a strategy which is the best value for the money. And that actually is a winning strategy in both Globus and along with the business strategy game, which, which I'm also grand champion of. And also a relatively strong winning strategy in the, in the real world too, is that most people like to buy things because they're good value. It's good, it's good uh, for the cost, what, what, what product or service you're getting. So uh, everyone goes to it, okay, is that there, there must be probably a, a nice restaurant in your town, which, it's a decent price and good food. And it's not, you know, your extreme, which is like low price, cheap food, which is probably like junky stuff like pizza or something, or that really, really expensive stuff, which is, you know, maybe a hundred bucks a plate. And it's really nice supposedly, but it's very expensive uh, to the point where there's diminishing returns on your, on your dollar spent. Uh, so let's start with um, AC cameras best cost. Now, I'll tell you guys, per se, the Globus strap plan hack, we'll call it, of how to make this easy. It, because a lot of people find this very difficult and time consuming. And it is. It's designed to be like not easy and time consuming. But I, I've learned a few ways of uh, a few ways to make this, this relatively straightforward and quick. Um, you know, for doing a strap plan, okay, like a person should take up maybe an hour or two of their day to do this. Uh, I can I can do it relatively quickly as I've been doing this for fifteen years. <laughs> is that what, what what I like to do is that I like to take screenshots of the camera and drone journal that have the information down. So let's have this here. Now, of course, this is all on my screen, um, but I'm just telling you guys uh, like the concept behind it is that I like having two documents open so that I can see everything and then I can go back quickly. So instead of going back and forth on the strap plan itself, the information is all on here. It's just, I find it's quicker to have it on a separate document. That's a little trick. Along with a copy of the CCE. For both cameras and drones for all four years. Now every strat approach is a little bit different, but it all works under a very similar premise. All you're doing is just justifying what your strat approach was for the last year and this year relative to the competition. Okay, so what's our price of AC cameras? So now I can go look at my other uh, spreadsheet here and I can read them out to myself and it's in relative terms, relatively easy. 400, 400. Oh, sorry, 350, 375. Yeah, you have to make sure you're looking at the right uh, company too. Two fifty, three seventy five, three seventy five, and three seventy five. Now we look on the other side of the uh, CCE for the um, industry average. I'll just go back to the case so, so it's really clear what, what, I'm, what I'm referring to. All we're, all we're doing right now is just comparing the prices 
of our company along with the industry average here on this side. It's always our company and the industry average. It's all that we're doing. Three twenty five, three twenty five, three forty five, three nineteen. Yeah, something else too is that I like to go up and down the document. So you see that I go up, I, I go down here, I go up here. Just just little things that I do. It, it's a bit smoother, that's all. Okay, now let's have a look at quality. Quality, which is PQ, is 5.1. They should all be 5.1, actually. Yeah, 5.1. Industry average is 5.1. So we are the same. Now, our cost, sorry, our price is higher than the industry average on average. And our models here is 4. And the industry average is also a 4. Let's have a look at our advertising. North America, 9,000, 7,000. Nine thousand, seven thousand, Asia Pacific, a seven thousand, Latin America, five thousand. Let's roll on up. Twenty three hundred in Latin America and twenty nine hundred. Put this down. 23, 29, let's roll it up further. That is 3,500, 4,500. Warranty, uh, 180 days versus 230. Now, I, I know that our warranties are the same across all four years. And theoretically, it should be very similar across the, uh, the competition too. Of course, we'll double check. In this case, it's 230, uh, 230, 230, and 230, okay? Just, just to uh, remind everyone, all this information is coming from the CCE. I'm just comparing the, the 180 days on this side from our company and the 230, okay, but it, uh, which is the which is the industry average here. So all I'm doing, I'm just making sure that that that, that uh, we know that uh, what, where this is all coming from. I'm not just talking numbers off the top of my head. Um, okay. Now, production costs. Now this is why I took specifically the value here under the benchmarks. Our company's production cost here is 170. And the industry average is 196. 170, 196. Let's put those values down. Ninety-six. Marketing. Let's have a look at marketing now. 55 to 44, 51 to 35. I'll just read off the numbers off my spreadsheet, okay? We'll, we'll type them in. I'm just showing you guys where I got these numbers from. They're not coming out of nowhere. and 30. 69 and 34. So we, we can now look at our uh, company compared to everyone else here. This is last year, year eight. We're, cur we're currently on year nine. Okay. Uh, theoretically, it's possible that a company strategy could change in year nine. Uh, in this case, is that it's all the same. Uh, but our company on average, actually, look at this 319. Is that right? I always let, let, like to check back too. 
No, it is 319. Yeah, okay, we're good. So actually in this case, it's that the industry average is higher than us. We're higher than industry average by a little bit. Quality is higher uh, on, the, on the industry average side. We're similar on models. We're higher in advertising. We are lower on warranties. Our costs are lower than the industry average. That's extremely important. And our marketing cost is higher than average too. And that's our strut approach. Four cameras, let's press save. Let's do the exact same thing on the drone side. S cost. All right, so very, very similar approach here. Let's have a look at the drone costs. 2100 to 17. Twenty one hundred to seventeen thirty. Twenty one to seventeen twenty. Twenty two to seventeen eighty. PQ. Uh, is 5.2 versus the industry average is 5.1. So we are slightly higher than the industry average here. Number of models is three versus three. Advertising budget. Now this is kind of interesting is that drones don't actually have an advertising budget per se, but they do have search engine advertising. So I like to use that number instead. That's the only, only number that I see, which is close enough. So it's 3000 in Latin America. To 1100. Let's scroll it up. 3000 and 1700. 3017. Six thousand to twenty six hundred. And 8,000 to 35. Warranties is 180. And the industry average, oop, I was done 180 here. I like, just in general, I like 180 days uh, for warranties because theoretically said you should see what your warranty costs are within one year. Uh, in previous version of Globus is that the warranty could be up to three years. And basically is that there were scenarios where it looks great for the year at hand, but as because your company has a warranty policy for three years, you'll see the cost in future years. And then it, become, it becomes very onerous for the company in the future. One fifty five, one seventy. 155 and also 170. Okay. All of this is coming once again. This is the third time I mentioned it. But I'm just making sure that everyone's on the right path, um, on the right uh, page with me. All of these numbers are just coming from uh, the CIR, Com competitive intelligence reports here. All these numbers are just coming from here, comparing it to the industry average. Now we're looking at drone benchmarks. The cost is 1,081 and 1,115. 1,081, 1,115. As a point of interest is that drones is the larger business between cameras and drones. And also the most material, as you can see, is that the costs are quite a bit more. Let's have a look at the, at the, uh, the past. 1,081, year seven, 1,055, and year six, it was 1,113. Uh, it is fluctuating. However, is that looking at, is 1,081 in year eight, in year seven, the K is 1,055. In year eight though, the company had 5.1 PQ at four models. Oh, sorry, that's cameras. That is 5.2 PQ and three models. And the year prior was 4.7 and three models. 
So therefore, our company's costs have increased by $30, but actually our company's PQ has actually risen by 5.2, which is 0.5, which is actually a great return. All right, let's finish this off over at the marketing costs. Fifty-five and forty-four. Fifty-one. Hold on, hold on. Look at the wrong one. Two fifty-four and one thirty-seven. Two sixty-seven and one forty. 292 and 168. 410 and 167. And look at that. All complete. Strat, strat approach for the uh, drone segments also done with higher prices, similar PQ, similar models, higher advertising, uh, kind of higher warranties and lower cost that's very key as you can guys can see here we also have higher marketing too pretty good all right so now we'll go on to the fourth and last part of the strap plan which is the hardest and the longest part it's gotten so it gets easy is that the strat vision statement is fluff just write something down your company wants to B, X, and X, performance targets. Of course, your company is graded upon that specifically, but it's justified by the strut approach, uh, which is still just a regurgitation of numbers from the CIR and the benchmarks. Now you have to forecast for the future. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. Uh, so once again, this, this is, this is a, a, a situation where your company uh, has a lot of numbers to put in, lots, plenty. It's going to take time. It can take people hours sometimes. Let's do it within 10 minutes here. Yeah, is that uh, so how, how, I like to, how I like to approach this is that I like to put some uh, cost down initially. Um, so revenue is 306. So I'll put down 320, 330, 340. Um, is that we don't know if these numbers are correct or not. We have no idea. It's the forecast. And more or less is that how I approach it is that I just have something down and then I, this is our educated guest initially have something down and then we'll go back and we'll massage it and make it correct thereafter in case we're off. 580, we'll just have our costs around this area. It, it can go up, it can go down, we don't know. We're just having numbers in here, okay? So sometimes the numbers could just be the same because, well, maybe maybe it won't change or our, our approach won't change. Things like units though, I like to have it go up and things like cost, I like to have it go down a little bit. Our company is doing things to lower down our cost, right? Now see my other videos to see how, how, how you lower down costs. Increase the units here. By the way, is that all of this will shake out. Whatever is put in here, either it makes sense or it doesn't. And you'll you'll see how it is. So is that uh, it's it's like um I, I I I'm an accountant by trade. It's kind of it's kind of like a balance sheet and income statement. It all has to work out at the end. That's all this is. It's just an income statement balance sheet in a sense. It all has to end the same. The same being um, a forecast for, for the company in the future. So it, 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 so it should all make sense to what our strategy is. 
If you guys are looking for help for, for your strap plan, I, I do have help for that too in person if you like it. Um, this can be rather complicated. I, I, make, I make it look easy, perhaps. All right. <laughs> Last region, Latin America, right? Who's bored yet? Only a forecast. That's the big thing to remember about this is that we're not trying to be perfect here. It will shape out at the end. All right. Interest costs. Interest costs can be can be checked back at the income statement uh, for the year at hand. Uh, so there's a there's a double check for that. There is the income statement here. Financial statements. Interest. For the year as a forecast, which is year nine, is 11,000. So we can plug that number right here as so, and we can approximate the future years. As you, as you guys can see, you're able to see like previous years here as well. Um, you know, I, I see just going up by a little bit. No idea. Um, is that I believe the company stock price will go up and I want to get capital appreciation in if the stock price is going to go up, I, I want to buy it back at lower prices. And of course, I want to increase EPS ROE. So therefore, by buying back shares, I'm able to accomplish all of this. So let's go buy back shares, maybe buy 500 for every year at hand. No dividends. We, as that generally speaking, Globus companies are growth companies and growth companies do not issue dividends. We're not a bank. Banks issue dividends or mature companies like, you know, Esso, Pepsi, McDonald's. We're not, we're not, we're not mature like that. So let's have a look. Our company's EPS as a forecast is 9, 10, and 12. So let's have a check at our performance targets here. 9, 12, and 16. All right, so therefore is that I, I put in the correct uh, revenue amounts as a forecast. As we can see here, our company now has an EPS of 11.82, 14.53, and 17.80. We can see that uh, our company's performance targets is actually below these numbers approximately. So therefore our company's projections here exceed our promises to investors. And most importantly, okay, is that the year in question being year nine shows a, a value of 1182, which is comparable to what being shown in the game right now at 1154. There's four values to look at. There is the operating projections value, which, we, which we're doing in the operating projections in the strap plan. There is the performance target value, which we're promising investors. There's the forecast for the game, which is uh, year nine. And lastly, there is the final result, which theoretically this should be close to. So therefore is that our company has been able to accomplish doing the strap plan and we're able to uh, realistically uh, make these projections as per the strut approach and the performance targets are very realistic to also get as well. All right, so if you found this video helpful, uh, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.